Okay. okay. All right, all right. <laughs> are we going to go ahead and get started this morning? If, if I, I get anybody to stand. Roland, you're looking mighty sharp, man. You're looking mighty sharp. Wow. All right, we're going to start off with Don't You Want to Go. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but love in that land, nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land, nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Nothing but joy in that land. Where I'm at. Nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land. Where I'm bound. Where I'm bound. Nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land. Where I'm bound. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. So don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound? Amen. It's funny with the weather sometimes. You get that phlegm in your throat. I know that my Redeemer lives. I love this song. Four, four, ten, two. Hold on. You ready? One, two, ready. I know that my Redeemer lives in every praise for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrows free. I know, I know that my Redeemer is. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer is. He wills that I should wholly be in word and thought and deed. Then I, His holy face, may see when from this earth. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life He gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that unto sinful men the saving grace is mine. I know that He will come again to save.
Hey, man, you guys sound amazing. It's cool when you can uh, stand up here, especially with uh, the two sisters that I'm singing with. It's like uh, I have surround sound because I got these notes on, on both sides. It's just encouraging, but it's also encouraging to hear you guys when you sing back. I just want to welcome you all to the Memphis Church. If you're visiting, I pray that you have the opportunity to get with someone from the church, develop a friendship, develop a relationship uh, for the sake of just honestly getting closer to God. It's amazing that, you know, to see you guys uh, just here this weekend uh, to just come and just praise with us today. And I pray as the service continue to move forward that we continue to lift our voices, that we open our hearts to those that are speaking so that we can feel and hear the message that's coming from God for each one of us. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us another day to live, another day to grow, another day to start a new friendship, another day to grow deeper in our relationship with you. God, I pray that as we continue to sing that our hearts are open, that they're softened. And I pray that when those that speak, that our minds are tender and open to what's being said. I pray that we encourage each other today. I pray that we walk away uh, spurred on uh, to walk uh, even more faithfully uh, as disciples and in our walk with you. God, we love you so much. We know that you give us so much grace and mercy. And I pray that you not only be with us, but be with disciples and those that love you all over the world. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. And I pray that you be with us in every single thing that we do for the rest of our natural lives. This I pray and ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Man. All right, so we're going to, uh, this phone, if I can remember this stuff in my head. 712, I can't keep it to myself. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me, you ought to have been there when he saved my soul. You ought to have been there when he wrote my name on the road. I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting what the Lord has done for me. Said I wasn't going to sing about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to sing about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. Save my, Save my soul. You ought to have been there. We wrote my name on the road. I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting what the Lord has done for me. Said I wasn't going to preach about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I I said I wasn't going to preach about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to have been there. You ought to have been there. Way to save my soul. Save my soul. You ought to have been there. You ought to have been there. Way to wrote my name on the road. I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting what the Lord has done. Me. I said I wasn't going to shout about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. No, I couldn't keep it to myself. I said I wasn't going to shout about it, but I couldn't keep it to myself. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to have been there. You ought to have been there. You need to save my soul. Wrote my name on the road. I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting what the Lord has done for me. I 
Oh, yes, I started walking. I started talking. I started singing. I started shouting what the Lord has done for me. Amen. You may be seated. Amen, amen. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Awesome. You sound good. So I've got an update for you. Special missions. This number I'm about to give you is probably not quite final, but it's pretty good. It's real good. What is our goal as a church? 20 $20,000. How much do you think we got? Maybe. You know the old joke about that, right? The old joke is, I got good news. The building is paid off. Wouldn't you like that to be the good news? The bad news is the money's still in your pocket. <laughs> That's a bad, bad joke. No, but real, how much do you think we got? Somebody said 21. 22. 19.5. We're all around it. Nineteen thousand seven hundred and fourteen dollars. Go ahead, yeah, absolutely give applause for that. That's incredible for a church that's endured as much transition as we endured in 2022. That's amazing, and, and I believe there's still a little bit more to be counted, but I'm not sure. But even if it's all in at nineteen seven fourteen. We have AMA reserves uh, that will more than cover that 200 and what is that, $286? So we've met our goal. By all purposes, we've met our goal. Give it a round of applause. You guys are super, super generous. I know the brothers and sisters in Colombia, Ecuador, um, Peru, and Venezuela will be extremely grateful. Take that money and add it to what the AMA has already collected. And uh, it's just got to multiply our efforts. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity. Um, I need a show of hands right now. If you think at this time you're going to be able to make the movie Game Changer on Saturday, November the 12th. Matter of fact, keep your hands up for a minute. Can I get on one hand how many people that are coming from your family? November, uh, Saturday, November the 12th at 4 p.m. Okay, that, that, that's helpful. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll keep doing that the closer we get. We're trying to uh, have an accurate, as close to an accurate head count as we can for, for some things we're trying to do with it. Um, feel free to, to invite your family, invite your friends. It's a family-friendly film for sure, um, but it's all going to be here in the sanctuary at 4 o'clock. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, way back in the Old Testament. I'm going to talk about a changed life today, but specifically about one man whose life was changed, Jabez, in the Bible. You've probably heard of him, but maybe some of you have not. Uh, he's not as well a known a character as some that we study out, but I think you'll see inspiration from his life today, and uh, hopefully it'll help you. You guys, have you had a challenging couple of weeks? Anybody besides me had a challenging couple of weeks? I mean, I'm not afraid to raise it. I mean, that's where the growth is, right? It's like, man, I've had to deal with my patience this week. I've had to deal, or my lack, my lack of. Um, I've had to deal with Difficult people, but then I had to remember that I'm one of those too, and, and situations not going exactly the way I'd like, which really, if we're being honest, they, they rarely do go exactly the way we'd like, right? But there's opportunity for growth in all of those things, right? Yeah. There's opportunity for change in all those things. So we're going to talk about a changed life today, uh, but let's pray first before we dig in. Let's bow. Father, we uh, have the great honor of coming all together as family and bowing before you and saying, thank you, we want to worship you today. 
And Father, may our hearts be pierced by something today, God, a song, something said in fellowship, a scripture, a thought shared uh, during the message, a thought shared during the communion. However you choose to do it, Father, use something in the service today to make our hearts softer, pure, and draw closer to you. Father, as we looked at last week with the Pharisee and the tax collector, all you really want is a, is a humble heart. And uh, Father, we're not real good at that on our own. Uh, so Father, help us. Please help us with your spirit, through our brothers and sisters, through your word, uh, to either stay humble or get more humbler, because we, we, we certainly have lots of room to grow in that area. Amen. Father, I want to pray for Dennis right now as he uh, gets ready to have a stint put in this Wednesday in Nashville. Pray that um, you're with him and Mary and that any anxiety they may be feeling, um, that, that you, you lift that up. You minimize that, if not take it away altogether. Uh, be with the doctors and the whole medical team and let that procedure go as um, easy as possible, God, and we pray for a wonderful result for our brother, God. Uh, Father, we, um, we thank you for what we've collected for special missions. God, we, we know that's you working in the hearts of the saints to uh, give generously. And Father, we're so, so grateful that you've uh, multiplied our efforts to help us reach our goal, Father. Thank you so very much. Uh, Father, we pray that uh, as, as we have a little fun together in a few weeks and show a movie that more people will come and that we will have visitors there. Um, but just let us laugh, have a great time, and, and just know that we can spend time together and have fun. And so, Father, thank you for those opportunities that you give us to do that. Uh, Father, right now, just speak through me and let your word be active as you tell us it is, and let it pierce each one of us and draw us closer to you and let us be more like your son, Jesus, than when we walked in the door. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 4. Verses 9 and 10 reads, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. You know, just two short verses there, right? But a lot is said in those two verses. Jabez is more honorable than his brothers. His mom called his name Jabez, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez calls upon the God of all Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory, that your hand might be with me. Keep me from harm so that it might not bring me pain. He is asking to do more for God. He is asking to serve more, not less. Wow, there's a great example for us there this morning, isn't there? And God grants what he asks because he is seeking first the kingdom. Like Matthew talks about in chapter 6, verse 33. You ever had one of those moments you wish you could just change yourself? And this part of my character stinks. I wish I could change it. And I can't deflect all that. I've got to take ownership and try to make the changes I can make, right? But there's some things in us that only God can change, right? I'm sure all of us have things we'd like to change. Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep saying this? I had, I had a, I won't go into detail for time purposes, but I had a challenging situation the last 10, 12 days dealing with uh, someone that helped me with my book that because of changes I'm going to make, I had to have some difficult conversations about it. And I knew they weren't going to be easy, and one of those conversations wore me out for about 48 hours because I knew that in that process I had hurt a sister. It wasn't intentional. 
it was, it was not my heart at all, but just the process, it was going to do that. And now I had to, to soften the blow as much as possible, but still speak the truth in love. Man, that's hard. Because none of us wants to hurt anybody intentionally, do we? Moments to grow, right? <laughs> Opportunities to grow. If you walk into any bookstore, you can go to the self-help section and find, depending on the size of the, the, the bookstore, hundreds if not thousands of titles about self-improvement, right? That's because authors know that's what sells. There's a market for that because they know that we gobble that stuff up wanting to know how to improve ourselves. And then we read through the Bible, which is our best source, right? For sure. We're tempted to skip entire sections because there seems to be so little practical information for us, or so we think, right? Maybe it's that, maybe it's we don't want to do the steps that are in there because they're hard, right? And the first nine chapters of First Chronicles... Or an example, you find the list of names with very few details to offer any glimpse into the lives behind those names. We read it, and it's just names, but those folks had hearts. They had lives. They had souls. And then suddenly, we run into a story like Jabez, where there's a huge nugget in the whole story. More honorable than his brothers, verse 9 says. Honorable means weighty, significant, respected. Why did he carry greater influence than his brothers? I think it has to do with the humbleness. There we go, that consistency, right? The humbleness of his prayer. See, the Jews put a lot of thought into the names that they gave their children. Oftentimes, it would communicate those names, the hopes and dreams of the child's parents, like the name Jesus, which means Jehovah is salvation. Other times, the nature of those names greatly influence a choice in a name, like the name given to Eli's grandson after the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by the Philistines. Ichabod, which means the glory of God departed. Don't want that name, do we? Solomon wrote, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. Hmm. But Jabez didn't receive a great name, did he? No, his name means he caused me pain. We don't want our mom saying that about us, right? Why would she say that? Why would she call him that? Well, maybe it was the intense suffering that a lot of mothers experienced during childbirth. Maybe. Maybe it was something more shameful. Maybe it was something difficult during a time of famine or war. Whatever the reason, his name reminded his mother of pain. That could define a person growing up. That would be easy to define who you are by your name. But Jabez didn't do that. Instead, he took that pain of carrying that name and he gave it to the Lord. He asked God to bless his life, to change his destiny. Are we praying that? Are we still praying that after all the years we've been following him? Jabez was not a man that surrendered his life to his circumstances. No, he aimed for something higher to be honorable. I love this story because in some ways it's my own, but not just mine. In some ways it's yours. You've been transformed by the blood of Jesus. You've been transformed by the Word of God. You've been transformed by the Holy Spirit. We all should be able to relate to this story. Well, I've got two points today. First, God is our only hope in life. God is our only hope in life. Jabez realized that God was his only hope for change. 
I'm assuming you figure that out somewhere along the line, or maybe you're in the process of figuring that out. Maybe you're seeking God and coming to more and more of a conviction that I can't do this without him. You're not alone. God is our only hope in life. Jabez could have blamed others for his situation. He could have. We do that sometimes, don't we? He could have became bitter about his childhood experiences and spent all his time in self-pity, frustrated, and thinking that the world owed him something. He could have even relied on his own resourcefulness to pick himself up by the bootstraps. That's a, that's a manly thing, right? That's a North American thing, right? Self-made man. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Good luck with that, by the way. I've, I've tried that. But instead of resorting on his own resourcefulness, instead of pointing the finger at everybody else, Jabez gave himself to God and let God do what God could only do, and that was change his life. The blessed life can become yours as well. Maybe you're in the middle of it right now. Jesus said he will give you life to the full. What is that full of? Is it full of busyness? Yeah, could be, depending on what those busy things are, right? What is, what is life to the full? Are you being a blessing to others? Are you serving more, not less? Who are you serving? For some, bitterness prevents being all that you can for God. Some of that bitterness hinders us from trusting God, trusting his heart. Take care of us. I can't remember where I was, but I was with my son Michael earlier this week. And it wasn't the first time I'd ever said these words. But we were talking about something. I wish I could remember what it is right now, but I can't. And I said, you're just going to have to trust me on this. And, and I've probably said that, you know, 50 times, 80 times. I don't know. But that particular time, I caught myself. God, God showed me. He's like, don't I say the same thing to you? You don't have to have this all figured out. You don't have to have all the details you just need to trust me. And as simple as that sounds, that's so hard for us to do sometimes, isn't it? Some people have had terrible childhoods and terrible young adulthoods. Somebody they trusted, somebody that supposedly represented God maybe, abused their power, abused the relationship. And that abuse can come in many forms, and it's all... Very, very disgusting, right? Whatever the reason, bitterness can hold us back from fully yielding to God. Others are caught up in things of the world, and they love, and we're warned about that over and over in the Bible, right? Do not love the world. We have to live in it, right? But we can become infatuated with it of things more than God. Some people are afraid of what they're going to have to give up to have a real intimate relationship with God. What they don't realize is whatever they're giving up is nothing in comparison to the loving relationship of God. You gain so much more than you lose, right? But Jabez became an honorable man because of falling back on old worn out excuses. He flung himself at the feet of of a compassionate God. If you're ever going to rise above your current situation that you're frustrated with, you're going to have to fling yourself at the feet of God. You're never going to become the man, the woman, the husband, the wife, 
the son, the daughter, the success in life you want to be without God. You might succeed for a while. You might. From the world's definition. But it's fleeting. It won't last. And even if you do make it on top in the world, you're not going to make it eternally if that's your focus. See, Jabez threw himself down at the Lord's feet, hungering. <laughs> Are we hungering for God's best? And asked God for four specific things, and we're going to run through them fairly quickly first, okay? He asked God to make him a blessed man, right? That's fair. Bless me indeed. We probably all say that, right? Yeah. Bless me, Lord. This man called a pain since he was born wanted God to turn him into a blessing. In the Hebrew, the word blessed is the plural form, and together with the word indeed suggests that Jabez wasn't just asking God for a blessing, but a life full of blessings. And our God is ready to answer that prayer when we're humble. When we humbly ask it, he's ready to answer that. Jabez recognized the generous nature of God and how God loves to shower his people with blessings. God is not stingy with his blessings. Also, Jabez asked God to make him a bigger man. I don't think he was talking about height and weight. <laughs> He's talking about character, right? When he prayed, enlarge my border, he wasn't satisfied with a narrow, meaningless life, a little life. He aspired to greatness to give God glory with his life. He knew that greatness had its price. He knew there was only one way he could expand. He had to face the enemy in battle. Are you in a battle right now? You're begging God to expand your borders? He knew, Jabez knew, that conflicts and struggles would come his way, but instead of shrinking back, he prayed for be, to be bigger, to face those challenges, not be a coward and a, and a fearless not be a coward, but become a fearless believer. Are you fearless right now? Thirdly, he wanted God to make him a bolder man. When he prayed that your hand might be with me, the hand of God is a reference to God's power. Are we tapped into the power of God? How big are your prayers? Do they reflect who your God is? Our prayer life will reflect how big our God is. Sometimes we need to right-size our God. Our prayers are too small. Sister was sharing with me this morning things going on in her life. I'm like, God is doing immeasurably more than she could ask or imagine. But that's available to all of us. What set the prophets of old apart is they stood before God's people and pronounced truth for life. Yeah. It's what made the kings of old successful in battle. So Jabez sought God's hand of power and blessing, but that he might walk in fellowship with God with nothing coming in between. What's between you and God in fellowship right now? Be bolder. Be more humble. Then lastly, he wanted God to make him a better man. Simply a better man. When he said that you would keep me from harm so that it not bring me pain. Jabez knew he was living in a wicked world. I don't think it's gotten better. I think it's gotten only worse. It's debatable, I guess. But Jabez saw sin all around. We see it all around, don't we? He had seen what it had done to those he loved. He knew he couldn't give in to the desires of his flesh and walk with God intimately at the same time. 
He wanted God's best for his life so he could be a better man, so he could serve more lovingly. Failure, you see, is often little compromises we make that become addictions. And they slowly drive a wedge between us and God, don't they? Jabez said, basically, Lord, make me a better man. Help me to rise above my desires. That was his prayer. Is it ours? Is it yours? If we're going to experience the abundant blessings of God, we're going to have to understand, not here, here. We can't do it without him, brothers and sisters. We can't. Every time I try, I fail miserably when I try to do it on my own. There's no room for self-sufficiency in God's economy. You're going to have to hunger for him like you did it first to be able to see him do miracles. Let's turn over to Matthew chapter 5, please. Jesus' words in Matthew 5, chapter 6. I say chapter, I meant verse. <laughs> chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. There's a promise there, guys. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. But we've got to do our part. It's that if and then. The if is, are we hungering and thirsting for righteousness? Then. We will be filled. If you're empty, if you're not experiencing that abundant life Jesus promised, there's something amiss, and it's probably that hunger and thirst for righteousness that he wants us to have. We don't know a ton about Jabez other than his mother gave him the name Pain, but we do know that he grew up being more honorable than all his brothers. What made him more honorable is his humble prayers and desire for hunger and righteousness of God. He was more honorable because he honored God first. But most Christians don't hunger for the very best of God. Oftentimes, the harvest field, we say, is out there. And it's true. But we have a harvest sometimes in our own seats. Uh-oh. Had to say it. Sometimes the harvest is in our own walls. Might be asked to explain that sometime. Our attitude can be, what's the very least I can do to get by as a Christian? We wouldn't say that, of course. But is that what's in our heart? We're not concerned necessarily about honoring God with our daily decisions. I can show up on Sunday, sing a few songs, drop a check in the plate. I might be good for another week. But what are you doing daily to pursue him? What are you doing in your daily prayer life? What are you doing in your one another relationships? Are you still in the fight, brothers and sisters? I hope you are. He wants us to live a blessed life. He wants it to give us abundant blessings. I said a lot to get to the second point. We need to stop making excuses and start making changes. I'll say that again. We need to stop making excuses, excuses and start making changes because Jabez didn't make excuses. He broke from his past because he refused to play the victim. He refused to make himself feel better about his own failures by measuring himself with everybody else. Oh, we do that, don't we? As long as we keep falling back on excuses or comparing ourselves with the Joneses, we're not going to rise above our circumstances and our mistakes. Turn over to Philippians chapter 3, please. 
bringing it down for landing, Tom. You got up a little early. You got you got up a little early, but I got you covered. Philippians chapter 3. See, true healing and blessing comes to those who do what Paul says here in verse 13 and 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward to Christ Jesus. We've got a sister that just did that a few weeks ago. Anita pressed forward, forward towards the goal. And I don't have to take a poll in here to know that we all want the same goal. We all want to be where she's at. We all want to hear what God has said to her. Right? We've got to press forward. We've got to change some things. And, and only you know what they are with you. I know what I need to change, right? We've all got stuff, right? God answered the prayers of Jabez in a spectacular way. I love that word. Spectacular, right? Don't you believe he can answer yours in a spectacular way? We must remember that the book of Chronicles was written by Ezra, the scribe. And Ezra refers to Jabez one other time in his writings, it seems that Jabez went on to have a mighty impact on God's people. Problems come to us all, brothers and sisters. Jesus also said you will have trouble. Sometimes we don't believe that as disciples, but we know better, right? It's going to keep coming. What are you going to do as it keeps coming? Because if you don't have a healthy way of dealing with life as it comes, those problems are going to be magnified. And if you don't have healthy one another relationships, you're going to feel all alone. And God doesn't want that. He doesn't want you to be alone. No more excuses. No more wallowing in self-pity. God will help us rise above it. If we right-size him, if we think he's big enough, he will fix it. We sing it, Jesus will fix it. We sing it, we sing that next week. We sing it, but do we believe it? Quit telling yourself it can't be better. It can, brothers and sisters. Maybe we need to do this morning what Jabez did. Maybe we need to take a moment and throw ourselves at the mercy of God today and watch him go to work in a spectacular way. Amen? Amen. I love you all. To God be the glory. Tom's going to share the announcements with us. Morning, everyone. I have quite a few announcements. This is from Sean and Veronica Noble. Today, Roland would like to celebrate with his friends his promotion to chief, great picture there, to chief petty officer in the United States Naval Sea Cadet Corps. The USNSCC is a youth organization sponsored by the Navy that puts cadets through a modified version of the Navy, mirroring the structure of the enlisted ranks. Sea cadets start out as E-1 recruits and go through a two-week boot camp. They then complete coursework, do advanced trainings, and must pass physical readiness tests along with minimal length of service in each rank. The highest rank a sea cadet can reach is Chief Petty Officer E-7, and very few cadets reach this rank. By reaching this rank next year, Roland will be the top sea cadet for not only his unit, but the region. We are also celebrating Roland securing a scholarship from EAA Memphis that will pay for him to get his private pilot license within the next year. Roland, would you please stand up? This handsome young man behind us in his dress beige right behind 
Retired Captain Vic Cooper of the Navy as well. I uh, would like to invite everyone uh, who are of the Kingdom Kids age range and their friends to join him in a celebratory luncheon immediately after church today in one of the Kingdom Kids classroom. They will be serving Subway sandwiches and cake. We wish to congratulate Roland and we love you. The Fall Festival will be this coming Sunday, October 30th. Trunk or treat. Immediately after service, games and snacks will be provided. Appropriate costumes, please. Please sign up with Rebecca Wormer today for this trunk or treat. In Hurt to Hope, you will learn valuable life skills to help you manage your emotions in line with how God created you. In this lifetime, you will experience life disappointments ranging from minor failures to extreme loss. Hurt to Hope focuses on teaching you how to process all your pain in a healthy manner. The next Hurt to Hope workshop will be Friday, November 4th, and Saturday, November 5th. To learn more and to register, go to Hurt, the number two, hope.org. Our next service with the Natural State Church will be in Brinkley, Arkansas, which is about an hour, 20 minutes from this building in Brinkley, Arkansas, at their convention center on Sunday, November 6, at 10.30 a.m. We really hope that all of you can make it, invite your friends and family, and stay after for lunch. And I really can't see. All right, as Steve mentioned, game changer. Come out, invite friends and family, Saturday, November 12th, 4 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. The Bridge Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, invite the singles to their New Year's Eve event. It's entitled Greater. Currently, registration cost is $80 to go up after November 14th. To learn more, I should have put that on there, but there's a website, bridgebr.org slash NYE slash 2002. That'll be in a subsequent email to you. That's New Year's Eve in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And on that Sunday, November 2nd, first, one of the two, uh, a trip will be made to go over to the French Quarters in New Orleans as well as part of the weekend. And Oh, not all of the announcements. There's a couple things that are not on the slide. Family, each year, Jory Bailey and her fellow Kind friends put together free food boxes for families in the Memphis area. This year, they plan to put together 25 food boxes for Thanksgiving and 25 food boxes for Christmas to give to anyone who needs them. This includes anyone in our Memphis Church Fellowship and outside of our church fellowship. If you would like a free food box or know of anyone who would, please contact Jory at her cell number, 901-279-5629. Please also let her know if you would like to help her put together these boxes on Sunday, November 20th, from 2 to 4 p.m. at her home in Bartlett. Although they do have and expect to have much of what they need, they always welcome donations a couple of the re requested items are turkey, 
whole chicken, or gift cards, preferably from Kroger or Walmart, but any from any store that sells food is appreciated. Joy also accepts cash donation. If you need her handle at Cash App or Venmo, please see her as well at that cell phone number. Okay, so tell me again what her cell phone number is. I guess I am uh, not reading what is written before me correctly, because that's what I have written down. <laughs> to repeat, 901-279-5626 is Jory Bailey's cell phone number. Thank you, Andre. And last but not least, I have a card. To the church. This is from Brenda Craven and Terranika Moore in regard to the passing of Brenda's brother, James. Thanks. Thank you for your thoughtfulness, your kindness, and your generous heart. Thanks for the prayers, text messages, and love during my loss. I thank God for a family like y'all, Brenda and Terranika and their family. Today's scripture for our contribution, and I'm going to have to read it from the slide because I don't have it pulled up yet. Now I do. It's from Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 25. One person gives freely, yet gain more. Another withholds what is right only to become poor. A generous person will be enriched, and the one who gives a drink of water will receive water. Let's pray. Father God, help us to imitate your heart, your son Jesus' heart, and the prompting of your Holy Spirit to be generous. Father, to be generous with what we have, whether it's plenty or little. And Father, please multiply the gift that we give today toward your work here in the Memphis Fellowship and in our Memphis community. We love you. Thank you for loving us first. In Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing a song to uh, help prepare our hearts for communion. Thank you. Two, you ready? Okay. <laughs> Two, three. When peace like a river attended my way, in so Praise. 
church. How's everybody doing? Good. Oh, that's the wrong one. I never change things from my Bible for some reason. It is an honor to be given the opportunity to bring to you this morning the communion message. But before I get started, I have a couple of questions for everyone. This is participation time. How many of you enjoy receiving gifts on your birthday? Looks like 100%. How many of you remember what you received your last birthday? Okay. All right. That's about... 10%? Okay. I share with you last month how great I feel October is. Why do you think I feel October is the best month of all? It's my birthday month. Are there any other October people out here? Awesome. Okay, October. Um, <clears throat> now... I share uh, any, uh, well, we did that. When I receive a gift on my birthday, it is a very special thing. I think that's, that's sort of my selfishness to some extent. But because of that, I celebrate my birthday the whole month of October. I'd like Salome that would travel from city to city celebrating birthdays, but <laughs> my birthday is October 1st, so I buy myself something every day in the month of October and give it to myself on my birthday. <laughs> it may, it may sound, sound weird, but that, that is just what I do. I, and in addition to the gifts I receive from loved ones, that's what I do. Socks, October 8th. <laughs> Wallet, October 15th. Belt, October 12th. <laughs> this year, each gift that I've been given or received I feel as though it's just stuff. I don't remember what I received, what I gave myself last year or the year prior to that. I don't remember what it was. Um, I'm giving myself books, two books from the brothers in our, 
congregation that have written books. Those are presents to myself from myself. I've kept Amazon busy. <laughs> the gifts <clears throat> will be of no value to me when I die. Only a few will be of any value to me in my walk with God. But there is one gift I received December 19th, 1991. I remember that gift. my spiritual birthday, that has made a great impact on who I am today. And gift is available to me each and every day God allows me to wake up. In Acts 1, verse 3 through 8, <clears throat> Bible says, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which one, excuse me, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So then they met together. They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set on his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Each of us were given the gift of the Holy Spirit on the day we made Jesus Lord. Even though I don't remember anything about what I got two years ago for my birthday, even things I gave myself, I don't remember. But I remember December 19, 1991 when I was baptized and I received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it is always with us. Jesus had to die on the cross for our sins in order for us to receive that gift. It gives us, it guides us through this life that we have to live here on this earth. It is God's gift to assist us in our walk with him. We are special to him. So, out of his love for us, he allowed his son to die on the cross, and we are given the gift that continuously gives. That makes me feel special. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. And God, we thank you for the gift that we don't have to look at a calendar to realize or remember what it is. When it, or if it was given to us, Father. God, we, we know the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit guides us through this life, Father, in which you have allowed us to live. It guides us in a way, Father, that it brings us closer to you in the decisions that we make, in the life we live, God, in the conversations we have with one another. The Holy Spirit guides us. And God, we thank you so much for that. Father, as we commune with you right now, God, as we take the, the juice and the bread that represents your son's broken body, help us, Father. Help us to have that on our heart as we leave this building, remembering that gift each day we wake up, Father. Give us gratitude so that we can remember the gift that you have given us. We love you, Father. We thank you again for all the things that you do for us, God, the things that we see, the things that we don't see. We pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Saul. Good morning, family. Uh, for those who may not know me, my name is Vic Cooper. I am a retired Navy guy, captain type suit. Uh, part of today's uh, response and honor is to continue. You heard Tom speak about Roland and his being pen chief. So I, I really wanted to, you know, I sort of mentor Roland not only as he becoming a pilot, but also in, in other areas. And I wanted you guys to really get a great perspective on what a great honor and accomplishment that Roland has attained from a Navy perspective. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what he did. I talk to you about the ceremony we had on Friday for him and what that, that did. But I want you to know that uh, this young man uh, has achieved a lot, more than most sea cadets ever get an opportunity to do or to achieve. So at this moment, I'd call Roland Noble, front and center. Yeah, face the group. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you that um, I was honored to actually be at the ceremony on Friday. And just to give you a little visual of what we saw. So at this ceremony, there was three sea cadet chiefs, Roland being one of them. But along with that, there were 40 other Navy chiefs. And just so you understand what it means from a Navy perspective, going from a enlisted uniform to wearing this khaki uniform you see he and I are wearing right now, it means that he has achieved not only from training, not only from leadership, not only from time and hard work devoted into accomplishing what less than 10% of sea cadets ever do. He has done an amazing job in taking care of his folks. And so I share that to say, as proud as his family was, and I'll tell you, Sean was there, <laughs> Miss Veronica was there, his sister was there, and she gave him a beautiful kiss on the cheek. Uh, and you see some of the slides of the events, uh, and it was an amazing celebration. There were Navy families that was there supporting their Navy men who have gone through so much to attain what they did, from the sacrifices, not, for, not only for them, but from their family. And I know Sean and Ms. Veronica sacrificed just as much to see Roland attain what he, he, where he is right now than he has. So, but now what's the significance of the pictures and the honor? So as you look through those, you see it, you see the great milestone that was attained, you see the people being so proud of their loved ones. But that was the first event where sea cadets had an opportunity to share in the, the major ceremony that the Navy does. And so that ceremony, it, it means so much. I mean, because those individuals are going from a time frame where they are now the chief. And when we say the chief in the Navy, that means like for our, in our family when we say the mom. You know, when something needs to be done and we're trying to figure out how we're going to do it, we say mom. In the Navy, when we're trying to make something happen and we're trying to figure out how it's going to happen, it starts with the chief. And Roland now has that responsibility. He is the chief. He is the one that's going to be called on, not only just by his enlisted uh, folks, but by his officers and those seeing to him alike. And he's going to have to respond. Just to give you a little bit about the Sea Cadet program but you, that you may not know, Tom did a great job. He gave you some, some good information on it, but I have a little bit too. So the C -Cadet, C Cadet program is for young men and women, 13 to 17 years of age, who are interested in developing their leadership skills, basic seamanship, courage, self-discipline, military discipline, and a commitment to be drug and gang free. So there's a lot that goes in to just being a member of the C Cadet program. And so for Roland to take that challenge, I think is an honor in this time and day. So and what does it mean for Roland to be a chief? 
We talked about the training that's required, the time, the effort, the hard work that goes into it. But there's something that means that I want to serve, that I want to give back, that I want to take young men and mold them as I continue to mold myself into something that's going to be great for our society. And that's what the Sea Cadet do, they, they do. They build men and ladies that are going to be great, beneficial, respectable civilians into our society. And that's what we like. So I'll tell you that Roland achieved that. He did. He went through all that was required. And now today, he is the chief. And so as we stand here, as family do, when one rejoice, we all rejoice. When one celebrate, we all celebrate. And so I was, I'm honored to be able to celebrate in this totally awesome honor. I mean, this achievement that means so much. But with great achievement, with great responsibility comes great accountability. And so I want to give uh, Roland a few things, a few scriptures that has led me to not only realize that uh, in leadership comes respect, and humility. And these scriptures have kept me grounded during my time, my 34 years in and around this Navy organization. So the first scripture I want you to understand is, is Psalm 75, 6 and 7. And it says, for promotions, and this is the J King James Version, for promotions cometh neither from the east, nor the west, nor the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it another up. So what that is, is God is giving you this. It has nothing to do with Roland. God has allowed you to have this promotion and to be in this position. And always keep that in mind, because he sets one up, he sets another one down. He can set you down what he's giving you. So always keep him in the forefront of everything you do. And so I have a, a gold stone that I keep in my office. I, I wish I could pass them or make one for you. But it's from Micah 6 8. And this is what I always do when it comes to leadership and when I'm thinking about serving my folks and, and what God asked for me. And it says, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? You, Roland Noble, to act justly, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. Above all else, if you keep those tenets in your walk, you will succeed and continue to succeed because God wants that for you. So on this day, I say congratulations. On this day, I pass on a Navy tradition of giving you a coin. This is a coin that I had when I was Commodore of the USS, not only five or six ships, but Fibron 5. And I want you to have it as a symbol of my pride and thankfulness and honor for what you've attained. Enjoy, young man, and serve us right. Thank you. Please join. Please join the family as they continue to honor Roland for the celebration in the back. If I get everybody saying, don't sit down, don't sit down. Uh, uh, congratulations, Roland. Uh -huh. that, this, that, that's just beautiful, man. Sure uh, and I agree with Vic. It's like in today's times, to, to see an achievement like that is amazing, considering how some of our youth are, are thinking, especially yeah. in the world. Yeah. Um, also, thank you, Mike. That was a great communion, man. Yeah. To, to point out the gift that God has given us. We're Amen. talking about the Holy Spirit. In the scriptures, it says it is the truth that comes from God, the spirit of truth that comes from God. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it, bro. And Steve, as always, bro, I, I love to hear you speak, man. Seriously. I, it, tying the two together, it's like if the way that I look at it in my own head is that I know that the Holy Spirit resides inside of me. This is a gift that is given to me from God. And whatever prayer that I answer when it comes to desires that fall within the will of God, he will answer. Mm -hmm. And we know that in the scriptures, um, there are some that speak about how God anxiously waits. Mm -hmm. It's like he's just waiting for us to ask so that he can give it to us. Amen. So I love you guys. 
Thank you, Vic. I love y'all, man. <laughs> I don't know what else to say because, I mean, I'm looking at you guys, and you guys just look so beautiful. And I appreciate every, everything that was spoken, every word that was saying today in the name of God. I pray that you guys walk into the upcoming week to be that example of what it is to be loved to the rest of the world. Amen. And I pray that next week when I see you guys, God willing, uh, that we come again together to fellowship and glorify God. Amen. Amen. In the morning when you rise. In the morning when you rise. Wipe the sleep out from your eyes. Wipe the sleep out from your eyes. Get down on your knees and pray. Get down on your knees and pray. Go into the streets today. Go into the streets today. You got to run to the fight and hold each other tight. Come on and run to the fight and hold each other tight. When you're out there on the street. When you're out there on the street. Don't you get burned by the heat. Don't you get burned by the heat. Lift your eyes up to the sky. Lift your eyes up to the sky. Let the spirit be your guide. Let the spirit be your guide. Run to the fight and hold each other tight. Come on and run to the fight and hold each other tight. And now when the day is done, and now when the day is done, and some souls have been won, and some souls have been won, get back on your knees and pray. Get back on your knees and pray. Thank you, Lord, for the day. Thank you, Lord, for the you day. You got to and run, run to the fight. fight. And hold each other tight. Come on and run to the fight. And hold each other tight. You got to run to the fight. And hold each other tight. Come on and run to the fight. And hold each other tight. Come on and run to the fight. And hold each other tight. You got to run to the fight. And hold each other tight. Amen. Love you guys.